Hey families, welcome to North Point. My name is Keela and I am so glad you guys joined us today because this is the time, this is our time right before the service gets started for families to spend some quality time together. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome. This is a place just for kids, parents, grandparents, neighbors, everybody to talk about some amazing big ideas together. And today we're wrapping up a series in a, on a big idea in a really big way. So if everyone in your house isn't in front of the screen right now, upstairs, downstairs, I need you to get them here, okay? I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds because everybody needs to be here, so round them up. Families, we're gonna get right to it. Give me a drum roll. I can't hear the drum roll. I'm gonna believe you guys are giving me a drum roll. But the big idea is hope. Believing trouble will not last forever. And I love this, because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes it feels like everywhere I look, all I see is trouble. All I see are mess ups. People I care about are sick, or school is really hard, and relationships can be frustrating. But hope tells us that the hard stuff isn't gonna last forever. And you and I can know that this is true because of something that Jesus said. I want you guys to read this with me. Big, loud, lots of energy. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the best news ever because Jesus wants you to know that while you might have trouble, you know, the messy stuff or the stuff that's disappointing or things that make you sad, you can trust and know that it will last forever because Jesus has overcome it all. So now you might be thinking, well, that sounds awesome. Even something that I can be hopeful about. But how did Jesus overcome, overcome it all and, and all the mess ups and all the trouble? How can I really know that there's hope? Well, lucky for us, my good friend Aaron Lee is gonna tell us the whole story of hope right now. So check it out. We believe that in the beginning, at the start of everything, before there was anything, that God was there. God is goodness and life, most of all, love. So before there was an animal or a tree or a cloud or a mountain or a solar system, God was there. And God is the one who made everything. And this perfect love, God created it all. Nothing was an accident. Every tree, every blade of grass, every rock, every rhino, every river, every planet, every single detail of the entire world and space was made by God who is creative, loving, and good. And everything was absolutely perfect. And the first two people, they were good too. God made them to show love to everyone and everything, just like God loves everyone in all of creation. So they took care of the world God made for them to live in. Imagine a perfect world. Like no hunger, no pollution, no sadness, no anger, no hurt feelings. Everything was full of life. And people, you and me, we are God's favorite creation. But things didn't stay perfect. See, people, they started thinking that what they wanted was more important than what God wanted. They started disobeying God and choosing the opposite of love. So instead of treating each other with love, they were hurting each other and the world and God. And when people choose not to love, they mess stuff up. And so because people were choosing not to show love or to trust that God was good, our world became kind of a mess. But it wasn't just the first people who messed up. You and me, we're not 100% good and perfect all the time either, right? I mean, we've all messed up. We mess up when we're unfair to others or when we don't tell the truth and we lie. And because we've all messed up and because we're not perfect, we have hurt God's world and we have hurt others. We are not perfect at love all the time. I mean, we are a part of the mess. But because God loved you and me and all people, God had a plan to fix the mess, our mess. So here's the amazing thing that God did. God's son became a human and came to our planet, our mess, a little over 2,000 years ago. And his name was Jesus. 
and Jesus was perfect. He never did anything wrong. Jesus showed us what love really looks like. He healed sick people. He helped poor people. Jesus taught us how to treat others. He taught us how to be patient and loving and kind. Jesus showed us how much God really loves us with a never ending, never stopping, no matter what kind of love. So Jesus said that the mess we had made and the way people were treating each other was all wrong and needed to change. This was not the way of love. This was not God's plan. But Jesus told his friends that he was gonna change the world in three days. <laughs> Impossible, they thought. Like how could Jesus change their messed up world in three days? But what Jesus was trying to tell them was that he was going to die. And that three days later, who's gonna come back to life? Whoa, like so many questions, right? Like why did Jesus have to die? And could Jesus even die? And wasn't there another way to fix the world? But there wasn't. Everything was a mess and Jesus was the only one who could fix it. So Jesus, even though he had the power to stop them, he let the people in charge arrest him and they nailed him to a cross and he died. Perfect, good, loving Jesus died. And Jesus let it all happen so that he could take the punishment for all of the mess ups, all the unloving, selfish acts that had hurt the world and people. Jesus took all of the punishment forever for my mess ups and for yours. Jesus' friends were so sad when he died. So even though Jesus had told them that it was all a part of God's plan, they didn't understand. So they buried him in a cave. Jesus' friends thought that he was gonna change everything. They thought he was gonna make everything beautiful like the first garden. They thought that Jesus was gonna fix everything for everyone, but now he was gone. Jesus' friends didn't remember what he said about how he had to die to set everything right. So three days later, they went to the cave and guess what? They walked inside and it was empty. The event of the universe had happened. Jesus wasn't in there. Jesus was alive. I mean, think about it. Jesus couldn't stay dead. Of course not. You can't stop God's love and nothing would ever be the same. On that first Easter, most of Jesus' friends didn't even believe it until they actually saw him. But Jesus was alive. And that is why we celebrate Easter. Easter is when we remember and celebrate that Jesus is alive. Easter changed everything. Jesus being alive was God's plan to fix our world, to fix us. God is creating and fixing and making all things good, even when everything seems messed up. God's love is everywhere. And because Jesus is alive, you can know that God loves you and wants to be with you forever. And that is why we celebrate Easter, because Jesus is alive. Guys, I love that. God's love is everywhere and His love overcomes. Jesus is alive and is turning all of our messes and trouble into something beautiful because that's what He does. Parents and kids, we can really believe that. Jesus is our hope. And guys, check it out. If you haven't already done page 32 and 33 of your Family Hope Journal yet, I want you to go ahead and try to do that sometime today after the service because it paints a perfect picture of how God is making all things new in the life of our family, your family, and in the middle of all your trouble. And if you don't have a Family Hope Journal yet and you would like one, okay, well, yes, the month might be already almost over, but our love for you never runs out. We got you. Okay, so I want you to head over to northpoint.live slash hope, and I will send you one for free. I'll walk it to the mailbox for you so you don't miss out, okay? All right, so guys, that's about it for me. I want you guys, I want you guys to join us next week, 15 minutes before the service gets started as we kick off a brand new Big Ideas series, okay? And if you're just coming or you're just joining us, and if you want to catch up on all the episodes in this series of the Big Idea of Hope, just click on the family button right after the service. All right, and uh, speaking of service, 
it's about to get started, so I'm gonna run and grab a seat. But guys, before I go, I just want I just want to let you know that it really means so much to us that you're joining us from all over every single week. So here at North Point, we are for you and we are for your family. Okay, so we're gonna see you guys next Sunday at 8:45 or 10:45 right here or at North Point. Oh, yeah.